Could you tell I was changing uh, tutorial sections? Anyway, screw it. All right, so now we've got this. Um, one more thing I want to go over, a little bit more complex uh, entity functions, since we're going to be getting that into that pretty soon. I plan on the next section being about lighting, and that can get, that can get kind of hairy. So let's uh, make an entity. And, whoops, no we're not. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to make these two spawns spawn different teams. One exclusively for the blue team, and the other exclusively for the red team. First of all, since I want to know what room I'm spawning in, it's not going to do very good to test it, is I'm going to grab all these walls, and I'm going to make them, I guess, red for the red team. Again, if you remember how to do this, apply current texture. Um, and I can make this look prettier, but I don't really want to yet. So there's the red house. I'm going to go over here, grab all these, browse, here's blue, texture, now I've got the blue house. Again, you can use whatever kind of textures you want just to make sure that you are spawning in the correct place. Now I'm going to take my spawn dude. And in a Team Fortress 2 map, you should have many spawns because you're going to have lots of team um, players um, spawning at the same time. You don't want them all spawning in the same location, too, because then that gets kind of crazy. And I think it might do terrible things to your computer. So let's duplicate this. You can duplicate it the same way that you duplicate a block. You hold down Shift and make several dudes. Okay, and I'm going to take all of them, and I'm going to modify their properties here. Right-click on them, and then click Properties. This is going to bring up this little dialog box that gives you a little bit more information about our objects, the info player team spawns. Normally, you'll be dealing with singular objects, but it's okay to deal with multiple objects here um, when they're, they serve the same function. In this case, they're the place where the players spawn. You can name them, you can set a team, you can start them uh, not working, and you can uh, manually um, rotate them and do other functions depending on what kind of entity you have. Again, if you're not a block, then you're probably an entity, and within those entities there's a whole, uh, there's a whole um, you know, plethora of different kinds of uh, roles that they can fulfill. And I'm just starting with team spawn because it is kind of the most basic and uh, you know, most needed entity that you're going to have if you want to play the map. Let's name this, you click on this name box right here, click there, and then here you can modify the value, click in the uh, this uh, dialog box here, and then type in, I don't know, blue spawn, or whatever you want to name it. So there it is, and the team, instead of any, you can click on the drop down box and just select blue. Now this should be self-explanatory but now those uh, spawns will only uh, take blue team members. When you're selecting your team at the um, at the team select screen, uh, if you select blue then you will spawn at one of those spawn points in the blue base. Then just hit apply, um, get out of there, cancel is fine. Uh, I'm going to take all of these, I'm going to control C, I'm going to copy all of them. And I'm going to zoom over here to my red base. Let's get rid of that guy. Point at the ground, control V, and I'm going to turn these guys around. Flip, uh, how do I flip this? Horizontally, yep. So they are turned around. Now I'm going to modify those properties. Instead of blue spawn, I'm going to change this to red spawn. And then the team will be red. Apply. Make sure when you're controlling and uh, copying and pasting, then they might be touching the floor. I, um, you need to give them a little bit of space. Drag them up off the ground a little bit. So there it is. Now we have two spawn points. One exclusively for blue, one exclusively for red. 
I'm going to do another entity right here, which is our, going to be our capture point. So click the entity tool. Now click um, or click on your little dialog box up here and type in prop. Yeah, just type in prop. Now you see all these things: prop, detail, door rotating, dynamic. Um, these are uh, extremely important. Your map will probably have a ton of props. They are the barrels, the crates, the um, the uh, control points, the little uh, the offenses, everything that your your map could possibly have to artistically to flavor it up a little bit is going to be a type of prop. Now for this uh, this particular map, I'll be using a lot of prop statics, but I'm going to start with a prop dynamic. The difference between the two is that prop statics cannot change once they are set in the game. They just um, display something. They are like a wheelbarrow or a uh, you know a, a shelf or something like that, and they don't do anything. But a prop dynamic will actively change in the game. And since we want our um, our spawn point to be, or our um, king of the hill point to change from red color, uh, change color from red to blue, depending on who's controlling it, we're probably going to have to have a prop dynamic. So I'm going to click in the exact center here, and I'm going to make sure it's in the exact center in the 2D editor. And right now, all it is is this little red box. All of your props start life as just this little red box. Now you can right click on it, click properties, and we are essentially editing the prop dynamics entity values just like we edit, edited the, um, the team spawn values. So let's go to click here where it says world model and then click browse and I guarantee you're gonna have a lot of fun with this. Now this is your model browser. It's going to show all of the models in all of your source games that you have installed that it can find, just the same as your textures. Um, it's going to find all of the 3D models that, you're, um, that are in your folders and you can use them for props. So back out, you can browse by um, the filter, like if I click here, um, I don't know, Egypt, if I've been playing uh, then I can get pillars, um, palm trees, there's a pyramid. Well, I'm going to change this to, um, well, th you can spend forever in here looking for uh, different kinds of props to use for your map. I'll give you some time to fool around with it after the tutorial, but for right now, click on the filter um, thing right down here and type in um, uh, I guess. So go to M MDL files first, so it gets all of them, or so it searches through all of them, and then type in uh, capture, no, it's a point. Yeah, cap, uh, just type in point, and then you're going to get uh, these selections here, mod, tf, and then the exact file name. I'm going to select props gameplay slash cap point base dot mdl. Click OK. And now our world model has changed from nothing to catpointbase.mdl. Click apply. And then there it is, our capture point in the flesh. I'm going to set it down on our big central block here. And now uh, this is the start of what will soon become a very fruitful and interesting um, King of the Hill map. But uh, that's all I've got time for for um, doing this. Next time I'm going to talk a little bit about lighting, and uh, after that we're going to actually put some triggers in here, and the map will be um, really close to playable. Uh, let's just save all this up, and then feel free to fool around with what you've learned, and I will see you next time. Love.